The narcissist is going to pay attention to how you think, how you act, what you do, what you say, because all those different things about your personality are what they can end up mirroring or how they can gaslight or how they can manipulate you to be able to get the desired result or to be able to get what they want out of the relationship. You see narcissists out there all the time being chameleons in whatever group they're with, whatever setting they're with, whoever they're around, because they want to at least appear to be the best person possible in everybody's eyes. And if the world can revolve around them in one friend group when they act like this, it can act like this around someone else, they can act like this around another family member, friends, whatever it might be, they're going to do that so they can get the attention, so they can get the supply, so they can keep the victim, whatever it might be, they want to be in charge of their destiny, of who they are, even if that's a fake reality. See, lying for the narcissist, it's not like it's just like a pastime. It's not like it's something that they just come up with one day and they just start doing. It's ingrained. It's day after day after day repetition to the point that lying becomes habit. Lying is just their regular status quo. Like, you're breathing, they're lying. Like, that's how it is. And it gets to the place where it takes forever for a narcissist to actually acknowledge that they're lying. A lot of times it's impossible. Um, it takes forever for them to start catching their lies. A lot of times that's impossible. And it takes them forever to get to the place where they're not just catching it, acknowledging it, but they're actually stopping the lies. That's when it gets really crazy and really hard. But it's good because if a narcissist can actually get to the place where they start realizing and catching those lies and understanding like, hey, these lies are actually destroying me. They're destroying the relationship I'm in and they're destroying everything else around me. I need to stop having these lies. That's the hard thing though is it is almost automatic. That's how it feels. So even being self-aware and starting to work on myself and starting to grow, like some of my goals are as simple as just cut the lies, as be real as be honest like some of those are like very simple like everybody should have that goal but for me i have to specifically have that goal and be able to check it off every single day saying was i real today was i honest today was i relevant in the things that i had to bring to the table the things that i had to say because otherwise it's really easy to go through my entire day and just filter in those lies really quickly because they become habit over a period of time a little bit more uncharted ground for me uh, because I don't have a lot of experience with a narcissist that was a mom. Um, I had experience with a girl who had BPD and a lot of narcissistic traits and we were together for a period of time and that was a lot of manipulation, a lot of gaslighting, a lot of lying and things like that. Um, my therapist, uh, her mom is actually a narcissist and has a lot of narcissistic traits and she's had to work really hard on setting boundaries but also coming to the place where she only cares about what she cares about. and being able to say like, hey, this is who I am. This is how I'm going to spend my life. And if this other person can't handle that, if this other person doesn't approve, like they're just going to have to get over it. And that's one thing that she's worked on to set a boundary in her life. There's multiple boundaries in that aspect, but I haven't done a ton of research and I haven't interacted with a ton of people that I know that have narcissistic moms. So that's all I got. The thing you have to think about, you're trying to get him to take responsibility of whatever he's done and actually be the person that's blocking you. That's just not going to work. Like you're trying to get a two-year-old to take responsibility for the actions when they don't even get it, when they don't care, when they're just entitled, like whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. Like you're trying to get someone else to block you. No, be the bigger person, move on and grow, block them, move on with your life. But stop wasting time trying to get them to do whatever you want them to do. Block them, move on. They keep pushing you and pushing you until they get to the place that they realize, oh, they actually meant it and they're actually leaving. And then that's when the waterworks turn on. That's when the begging turns on. That's when they go to all these extremes to kind of win you back because that's the next challenge. That's the next high to be able to get this person that they just pushed all the way to the edge and said they were going to leave to actually stay now and come back and be their own supply. Sometimes this is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The narc doesn't want it to happen, but the narc knows that it's going to happen because of their choices, because of how they treat the other person, because of how they lie, how they manipulate, and the things they do to get to the point where the other person's like, hey, I'm leaving because this relationship is toxic. I wouldn't say that all narcs hate themselves. Uh, I do think there's groups of narcs out there that do hate themselves, especially people who struggle with like BPD, and things like that. A lot of that tends to be um, more on like the self-hate or even like suicidal or like self-hurting thoughts and things like that. Um, a lot of times a narcissist doesn't necessarily hate themselves because they're so puffed up with pride and they're so puffed up with who they are and who they want people to think they are. 
Um, but there is like, I think at times like a moment of like self realization or like a moment that they have like a glimpse or a tiny, um, tiny light that they see for a moment and they realize who they actually are, or they see a glimpse of how they've hurt someone or affected someone. And that actually comes out in the moment of actually realizing, Hey, there is a lot of shame. And all of a sudden that switches really fast to that anger, to that blaming, to just dropping really low in their life or is it a depressed state or an angry state, whatever it might be, then they're going to do whatever they can to get out of that as fast as possible. Healthy non-narcs shouldn't be thinking this way at all because they should be engaged with their emotions. They should be engaged with their partner and they should be engaged in who they are and how they are growing and how they're developing. So acknowledging that someone else has feelings should never come across as manipulation because they should be able to realize, hey, this person has feelings, I have feelings too. Sometimes those feelings are small, sometimes they are big, but they're still feelings and we have to be able to learn to navigate them and to be able to move on through life regardless of whatever emotions that person's dealing with. I think sometimes they don't see how bad it is because it's all they know. I think they've been brought up a certain way where all they've seen is these certain interactions or these certain feelings or emotions get put down by whether it's over controlling parents, overbearing parents, um, parents that were abusive, like whatever it might be. And they get to the place where what they see is just their reality. The problem with the narcissist is as they start to gaslight and manipulate other people and they start telling lie after lie after lie, they start getting to the place where they start constructing and reframing their own reality to bend it however they want, to make their reality be this new fantasy that they're the best person in the world or that everything's going to be just fine when it's not or when they're hurting other people. I think sometimes they don't see how bad they have it. I think sometimes they look at other people and see, man, those people have it really good. What's wrong with me? Sometimes I think that's a slight realization, but not all the time. Check this out real quick. This is a picture of me. Uh, about four years ago um, when I was working for Chick-fil-A and working crazy hours and stuff like this. But like this is an aspect of how exhausting. Like you see those bags, see those bags underneath my eyes, like that's how it was. It was super exhausting keeping up an image, keeping up a facade, keeping up like the lies that I would tell myself and I would tell other people that I was happy, that I was living in a great marriage, that I was doing all these wonderful things while at the same time like I was treating my wife awful. I was in in multiple relationships. I was with other people, like all this kind of stuff. Like it is extremely, extremely exhausting. And for the narcissist, a lot of times they don't know any other option. This is the only thing that they've been brought up in that they've grown up trying to figure out trying to realize and as a result they just keep doing it they keep making one awful choice after another awful choice thinking that it might get better thinking that it might find a way out of it and they never do and that's really the hard thing with narcissism is they're trying to find a way out sometimes but all their choices lead in the wrong direction and they keep making the wrong choices to try to avoid shame to try to avoid guilt to try to avoid feelings or accountability or getting to the place they might actually admit that they've done something wrong. It is exhausting. It is confusing. It is hard to understand. It gets to the point that you forget your own identity. You forget the past. You forget the things that you've been through. You forget the things and the hurt that you've caused other people because you've rewritten your history so many times you don't even realize sometimes what's real and what's just your fantasy that you built in the past. See, when you're going gray rock, a lot of times it can further frustrate and further make the narcissist even more angry. And so you have to be really careful when this is happening because you want to be able to have those boundaries. You want to be careful about what's going on, but you also have to be careful about yourself and your own safety with whatever might happen or whatever might be the response. Some narcissists will end up just losing interest and will end up moving away, um, moving to a different supply, things like that. Some will get more angry and you can use that as a way to be able to use that as your exit strategy or a way to move out. But please be careful whenever you do gray rock because sometimes it does have the opposite consequences depending on how mad the person gets how frustrated they get that you're not giving them a response going gray rock is something you want to be very very careful about you have to remember with a narcissist, a lot of it is a show, a lot of it is production, and a lot of it is sometimes a, a cry of them trying to come across as normal. So they might try to mimic something they see in a movie or what they see on social media or something like that to have people understand that they actually do love, that they actually do show some type of affection or like something that makes them be a little bit more human than what they actually 
are or how they're actually contributing to the relationship. So to give you like an idea, one of the first people that I was ever with that was like an official girlfriend or something like that, um, planned a day, took her, um, drove her like an hour or two. We ended up at a lake. We walked down this like awesome, awesome path and everything, get to a place where there's like a beach. There's two kayaks there. I'm like, hey, let's jump in these kayaks, jump in the two kayaks and go out. There's an island. We stop at an island, get out the island, walk up. There's like a rock that overlooks the entire lake that's there. I'm like, whoa, look at this. A step by the rock. There's already a full picnic laid out. And all this was just to get to the place to be able to ask her to be my girlfriend. So super love bombing, um, super making it just this giant production, everything like that. But that's what I was. That's what I was going to do. That's how awesome I was going to be. And at that time, I thought that was normal. I thought that was natural. Now, it's awesome to plan something like that, but it doesn't make sense when you start off that way and then everything's just a decline down because there's never something there long enough or big enough to be able to hold that type of adoration and praise that end up being fake in the first place. Uh, recently I went through and I had eye surgery so I have glasses here for the past a couple weeks and all and as I was sitting in the doctor's office I was sitting there and I was waiting to be able to take into the back there's several other people who are sitting outside um, one guy and one girl and the girl was like freaking out about like her eye surgery things like that and the guy was talking to her and just completely invalidating like her feelings like stop being such a baby like stop doing this like it's not a big deal like why like just all this kind of stuff and I sat there and I realized and it started like frustrating me and like building up like this frustration and rage inside me of how he was talking and then as I was sitting there I realized that was me that has been who I have been over years and years of coming back and invalidating the feelings of my wife and validating the feelings of other railroading running over people and for the first time like seeing that um, outside again from another person was really eye-opening to see